Well, I think probably it was done <clears throat> as much as a sort of demoralising tactic as much as anything. And they used to come in um, very, very low over the sea, you know, unless you were right down on the beach that you wouldn't see them. And then as they got near the beach, they used to come up over uh, the Ness, right round the town. And while they were doing that, they were machine gunning people and dropping bombs, which came down not so much as a crater because they didn't come from a height. Mm. They came this way, sort of thing, at an angle. Um, and um, it was all over in about 10 minutes. Well, probably maybe less. There were some guns on the beach. So what was the sirens going off and the um, um, bombs dropping and the plane noises? It was quite chaotic, but it was all over in about 10 minutes. And, you know, quite a few people in that time had been killed. Rows of um, houses had been bombed. Um, and that was Little Tinmus <laughs> down in Southwest. I was born at Soplin on a farm. And we had cattle, pigs and poultry. And uh, <coughs> I lived there till I was 20, 30. Then I met... My husband. Did you want another one? He, uh, and I married a farmer, and we bought a farm in Otterford, and had um, had six children. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes, it was five girls and one boy. <laughs> then they, <coughs> we sold the farm. It was let out to seven different flats. And my son was in one of them. And the girls, there's two in Buckley St. Mary and two in Taunton. I had a twin brother, um, late twin brother. Um, so he obviously chose the piano, he wanted them to dancing. Um, and of course I chose dancing. And I did that from the age of seven till I was 12, which was was a combination of tap dancing, ballet dancing. So I never learnt the piano at all, no. We used to put on pantomimes and such like at Christmas, you know. Like, uh, when they were doing the pantomimes, and they always have a group of dancers, don't they? Um, we used to do that. Um, I remember doing the hornpipe. We, or several of us did. And as part of the hornpipe, you have to go onto your heels and do that rolling back, going backwards. <laughs> And um, I don't know, my heel caught in something and I went flying. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> well, you know, it's on, on the night of the actual... On stage. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we had dogs. We always seemed to have dogs or stray cats or stray anything, really, <laughs> in our home. So um, we always would pick up the waifs and strays of... Um, of our neighbourhood, really. So if somebody didn't want a dog or a cat, they always seemed to end up in our home, which is lovely. Uh, oh, we had a... Yes, actually, we had um, a, a dog called Tanya, with whom uh, was slight, a bit of a rescue dog, really, again. And um, when we took over this dog, um, she immediately had puppies. <laughs> so I think that was the reason she wasn't really wanted... But she actually had the puppies in our ki in our back house kitchen. Do you know years ago you had like a kitchen, didn't you? you had like a yeah, almost like a scullery, really. Yeah. So I was brought up with the scullery days. Um, so we had a, a a dog there, and we just like as children. I remember just finding a blanket and a jumper. Mm -hmm. That's quite true. And then we put it under the under this worktop, and the dog actually um, had the puppies there. And it was really lovely, actually. I mean, she had two litters of puppies in the end, and they were just all Labrador, golden Labrador, so beautiful dogs. And we just, in those days, again, you gave them away to people that wanted a dog, didn't you? There was no kind of breeding them or selling them. Okay. And then along with the cats, the neighbours' cats and everyone else's cats. So my mum used to adopt children or foster children. So if we were coming home from school, we didn't know whether we were going to end up with a house full of animals or a house full of babies or children. So that was that was kind of our, our life in our home, really. Well, I got a Ford. Have you got one with yeah. a petrol and diesel? 
Um, start it, started it with petrol and then turned it mm -hmm. over to diesel and when you want to stop it you turn it back to petrol. No, he don't start like that. He just starts on diesel, doesn't he? On diesel? Mm. Oh, I see. Yeah, because so I got a 5,000. Yeah. I got a 3,000 to do do <coughs> 5,000. Oh, bloody. Right there. And then I, then I got a... The best one I got is um, the one he got out to the hedge trimmer on the back. So I put it on there. And Bridge. I, ju I just made a choir there. I know you did. Yeah, you used to enjoy it. <coughs> yeah, the vicar used to sometimes have a have a out sometimes. But there was a, a, a time when Tanya got older and she obviously must have had a phantom pregnancy. Because a dog can have phantom pregnancies, can't they? And um, and she, she took my dolly, <laughs> she took my tiny tears, <laughs> of which I still own, I have to say. So my tiny tears, she took it from my bedroom and we couldn't take this tiny tears away from her. She just had it and I just had to allow her to look after my tiny tears for a few months, really, mm. until the, the vet gave her. I remember the vet, we had to take her to the vet and they had an injection and all the rest of it and then suddenly she'd no longer had any phantom pregnancies and I could have my dolly back, <laughs> my tiny tears. I've got six sisters and six brothers. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and I've only got one sister alive now. She's, uh, she's in Spain. That was the youngest. That was Faye that comes to see me every Saturday. That's her eldest daughter. Oh right, she's in this country. Yeah, she's still in this country, and her, her other children are still, and she had four children. But I had one sister that had mm. nine children. Mm. Nine? Nine, nine children, yeah. and they were business people. She, a bit louder, eh? she, she was a, a coal a merchant's nice. wife, mm -hmm. and they all worked for their mother and father. And when they got married, they were all given a house. Wow. Lucky them. <laughs> yeah, it was lucky. <laughs> and and what, what was it like having all those brothers and sisters when we you had, were a little girl? We had all our quarrels, the same as anybody else. Mm. We, no, you know, nobody was any different, yeah. but if there was any illnesses, if you had chicken pots, all the others got it. Yeah, yeah. Well, the same with me. So <laughs> my father used to say when people used to want to come in and play, he used to say, well, um, I've got three of them with chicken pots, so it's either you come in or you don't. Mm. So yeah. they wouldn't... Just as well, um, to get it and old, have it and get it over with you. Yeah, that's what he said. He girl, said, mm. well, we all followed one another and yeah. going chicken pots. There was always somebody... <laughs> Yeah. They yeah. had it in I, illnesses. We had rations. Yeah, ration books. Two ounces of butter or something a week or two mm. ounces of tea or whatever it was. <coughs> you were allowed. Yeah, you it's very small amounts, wasn't it? Very small. Yeah, well, we, had, we had four books at the co op. Yeah. And we used to leave them for a month and then get like a month's supply. The rest used to go to Mr. Raisin just up the road. He was just an ordinary ordinary shop and he yeah. used to give us the books to cut the tea coupons out. Mm. And, you know, we used to have to cut the sweet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, when you never gave him all of it. Well, we didn't. <laughs> we used to go outside the shop and if there was an old lady that never had any tea or anything, you mm. said, do you want a tea coupon? <laughs> and I mean, that tea coupon was used twice. <laughs> <laughs> when we used to have a big rabbit, I mean, I don't know if any of you have ever ate the brains of a rabbit no, or the tongue of a bronze. rabbit, let's eh? Let's make that bronze. Yeah, yeah. but you know, you know the rabbit's head. 
You used to be able to crack it in half and take the brains out and eat it. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's a I'm very good at doing all these things. And the heart. <coughs> yeah, well, heart as well. I mean, there was nothing left, only the bones. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my mother used to make her own Christmas puddings. Oh, yeah. it, you know, a gas boiler. Back in November time, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Christmas puddings, and Christmas cakes. She'd put around about ten yeah. bowls of pudding in a with a wrapped up on the top with linen and yeah. string yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. Steam them. Yeah. For hours on end. Um, <laughs> I used, in those days mothers didn't go out to work really particularly. No, so we used to have to walk home for lunch and mm. then walk back again. Back again and back again. Mm. It's quite a walk, really, but mm. you know. So, how long does it take to milk a cow by hand? Mm. Ten minutes, quarter. Mm. Depends how much milk he got. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Next chapter. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah,